Hey there, it's Pat from PJM Scheduling Services. Uh, today I wanted to show you how to do a pure progress update using the global change feature in, in uh, Primavera P6. So why would you want to do that? Uh, well, let's say you had your, uh, you have your last month's schedule and this month's schedule update, and you want to see uh, if you ignored all logic changes and duration changes and calendar changes and stuff like that, and uh, you wanted to, to see what your schedule would be projecting based on just the pure progress that was achieved since the last schedule update. Um, this is how you would uh, analyze that in a, in a quick way. So what I've done is um, the two schedules that I'm looking at are my baseline schedule and then my, uh, right now I'm looking at the May 2021 schedule update. So right now I have my baseline schedule open. It's, I've called it my progress only schedule. And then I've baselined in my update file, which for this it's uh, the May 2021 schedule update. And you can see that I've assigned it to my primary baseline um, slot there. And so you can see here, my actual start dates are for the most part all blank. I'm filtered for the longest path right now, and I want to apply all of these actual start and finish dates that are in my update to my baseline. So I'm wanting to apply all the pure progress to my baseline schedule, move the data date forward, and see where the schedule is, is then projecting. So the way that I would do that is um, P6 has the global change feature, and I'm going to have to create, um, I, I already have the, the four layout layouts created here but um, so let's look at the first one that I'm going to apply is this progress I've called it progress only for ta completed tasks and if I open that up I can see that um, here's what I, I, I'm wanting to apply so any activity that is task dependent and the uh, the actual finish date in my update, so the BL1 actual finish date is not equal to blank. So basically any task that is completed in my update file, here's what I wanna do. I want to apply the actual, I wanna make the actual start date in this baseline file equal to the BL1 start, and I wanna make the actual, st the actual finish date equal to the BL1 finish. So that's gonna take all of my task dependent items that are completed and apply those same dates. So let's go ahead and apply that change. And then this log file gets created here. Um, so it says here's the old value for all of those items and then here is the new value of all of those items. So let's commit that change and it's, it'll ask you, do you wanna save the log file? No. So what happens is you'll notice a new filter then gets created. Um, something that's interesting about the global changes is however you're filtered on your activities is how it's gonna, it, it's how the global change is gonna get applied to your activities. It's gonna filter for the same information. So uh, let's go ahead and make sure that I'm filtered for all activities and let's apply the same exact change that we had. So th that same completed tasks, let's go ahead and apply, apply that change. And you can see the list is way more than I previously had. So let's go ahead and commit those changes. Um, so now you can see here it's starting to look, it's starting to take shape here where all of the information is getting applied. I still, there's still a few instances that I haven't included in the global change, which is um, in progress tasks. So I've only, I've only um, applied the progress to completed items. So let's make sure that the in progress tasks in my update file are also, um, the progress is also accounted for in the baseline. So if I open that layout up, this is how I have it filtered. So activity type is still equal to task dependent. 
the actual start in the the BL1 actual start is not blank. So um, it so those tasks are started in my update file, and the the actual finish date is blank. So anything that has started but not finished and is task dependent, we're just looking for that criteria. And in those instances, I want the actual start date to be the same as the BL1 start date. So let's go ahead and apply those changes. And you'll see here are those instances where the items are in progress in my in my update file. So it's going to add those these values to those items. So let's commit those changes. And um, then the other thing that I want to do is I want to account for milestones because you'll notice we filtered specifically for items that were task dependent. So let's let's get our start milestones done. Um, so these are activities that are start milestones where the BL1 act, uh, actual start is not equal to blank. Um, so then in those instances, make the actual start date equal to the BL1 start date. So let's go ahead and apply that change. And you'll see here is that list that is getting, so most of them already had actual start dates, but there's a, a few that are getting filled in here. Let's go ahead and commit those changes. And then we also want to do it for the, uh, the finished milestones. So let's look at what that filter looks like. We're doing activity type is equal to the finish milestone and the BL1 actual finish is not equal to blank. And for, th for those instances, we want to make the actual finish date equal to the BL1 finish date. Um, so let's go ahead and apply those changes. And this is what that list looks like. For the most part, looks like it's almost already applied except for a few instances here. So let's go ahead and commit those changes. Perfect. Okay, so now I've, I've almost accounted for all progress um, from my progress update and have applied it into my baseline schedule. I still need to do two steps, which is number one, let's um, reschedule this file for the um, for the new data date, which in this case, it's May 31st. So I want to match the data date. So now I've done that. And then the other thing that I want to do is I want to relook at the um, activities that are in progress. And I want to make sure that the remaining duration is equal in both files. Because you'll notice when you do the global change that you can't change remaining duration um, using the global change feature. So we need to look at that manually, which is only a few instances. So let's create a new filter and we'll just say in progress task, um, task dependent. So I want to say that the, um, or let's do activity status. Activity status equals, oops, that must be a, that must be a user defined field. So let's make sure, here we go. So activity status equals in progress um, and activity type, activity type is equal to task dependent. And I want all of the following, not any, so all of the following. So let's go ahead and apply that. So now let's add a few columns here. So I want um, the remaining duration and then the BL1 uh, remaining duration. So all, all I need to do is just all of these are in progress and I just want to match the BL1 remaining duration. So that's 1, 9, 68. Let's see if I can do it sort it by ID so I don't have to 4, 24, 3, 12, 4, 44, 88, 1, 4, 18, 1, and 3. And then let's go ahead and reschedule it. 
perfect. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and filter for our longest path and see based on pure progress what my completion date would have shifted out to. So I have a, let's do this, I have a filter in here. So let's scroll down and we can see based on pure progress, let's come over here. Um, I can see that the completion date would have actually pushed out quite significantly. So to um, March 29th, 2024, instead of January 15th, 2024. So that's, um, yeah, that's how you do a pure progress update in, uh, in P6 using the global change feature. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Um, and uh, if you have any ideas for a future video that you wanna, you'd like me to do, let me know. All right, have a good one.